All right, everybody, welcome to another shipyard video from the Virginia Five. And today we'll be working in the engine room. So here in the engine room today, we are working on opening up the other heads on the engine to look at the cylinders and the valves. As a triple expansion steam engine, this engine has three cylinders and three valves. They are all different sizes as they work at different pressures. This is a compound engine, so steam starts in the high pressure cylinder, then the valve directs it to the intermediate pressure cylinder, and then another valve directs it down to the low pressure cylinder. So today we will be looking at the intermediate pressure cylinder, which is the one that is being opened right now, and then the inter intermediate pressure valve and the high pressure valve. So we're being very careful here to try and get the gasket to not come up with the head, as we don't want to break the gasket. Uh, we're hoping to be able to reuse these ones. All right, so now we can get a look inside. The intermediate pressure piston looks exactly like the low pressure piston, just smaller. Spinny, spinny, twisty, twisty. Twisty, twisty? Twisty, yeah. twisty. And it's so what we're doing here, we have uh, what's called a die nut, and it's just being spun onto all of these studs to clean the threads out. These threads have many years of mostly never sees. Uh, built into the threads, so it's nice to clean them before we put the head back on. I'm mostly just cleaning off the silver paint. Oh, the silver paint, yeah, it does does get in, well, you know, just the very tops of the threads that stick above the uh, nuts. You're probably just cleaning off uh, a couple of decades of never sees. True. So, the intermediate pressure piston and the high pressure piston were both good to go. So it is time to start opening the valve covers. This here is the cover to the high pressure valve. Oh, so, inspecting one of the valves. This one being the high pressure valve. We're gonna mark both of these heads so we know which direction is forward. This helps us make sure that the heads go on in the same orientation that they came off. Once again, gonna just sort of get a putty knife in there and help separate the gasket from the head so that we hopefully do not break the gasket when lifting this head off. It's got a threaded hole in it so we can put in a big eye bolt to help us lift it. These ones aren't quite so heavy as to need a, a chain fall, but it's nice to be able to run a bar through it so that several people can help lift this. How high do you want to get it? Or do you want to get, you want to take the boat off? I think he wants to, um, yeah, he just said to leave these bolts on until we make sure that it's Loose, but to not make sure. Gonna give it a little lift to break the seal. We leave a couple nuts on there, so in the very odd chance that there was any pressure inside of here, the head wouldn't just blow off forcefully when the seal is broken. Of course, there's no pressure inside of the engine, so we can take the nuts off and take this head off. That one's tight. And now we can get a look inside the valve. These are called piston valves because they're rather piston shaped. And as they go up and down inside of here, they are opening and closing the steam ports to the cylinders. These go up and down because they have connecting rods on eccentrics on the crankshaft. So the crankshaft spinning is what makes these guys go up and down. You can just see through the portal the high pressure valve sitting next to this one. Intermediate pressure valve. High pressure valve. 
So inside here is a network of steam channels directing steam either into the top of the cylinder and out at the bottom, or in at the bottom of the cylinder and out at the top, and directing it to the appropriate place in the next cylinder. Basically the same thing, just smaller. Right, so steam comes in through the throttle and into the high pressure valve, which directs the steam into the high pressure cylinder. The exhaust steam from the cylinder bypasses the HP valve and comes to the intermediate pressure valve, which then sends the steam to the intermediate pressure cylinder. And then that goes to the low pressure valve, which sends it to the low pressure cylinder, which then exhausts its steam down to the condenser. And one of our final tests is going to be running a boroscope down in here to get a look inside the valve channels and make sure there's no debris blocking them. Boroscoping the valve. So we're looking into the uh, intermediate pressure valve cavity. Okay. And um, Clay, can you um, zoom out and look at the top of the piston? Just to kind of get a perspective of where we're at. So there you can see the top of the IP uh -huh. uh, valve piston. Okay. And then this channel would take steam into the cylinder? Uh, I think this might be the exhaust. Oh, side. from the HP. Yeah. Okay. And we're looking to see if there's any debris, um, making sure there's nothing that might get sucked into the pistons. Yeah. This borescope was the best $115 I've spent. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to look down there. With the engine taken care of, we do have some other tests today. So one of the last things to do with the valves is going to be repacking them. So the packing is the seal that keeps steam from leaking out around the valve rod. Our packing here is um, sort of a braided fiber with graphite. So we cut them all to the right size, and then these get wrapped around the valve rod or piston rod. And sometimes there might be 10 stacks of these rings up in there. They just get very carefully packed up in around the rod and squashed into place. So Kelly here is, is coating this packing in a healthy helping of never sees. Yeah, so we, we, did, we wanted more control on the slower speed. And then it gets wrapped around the valve rod and stuffed up inside. Once a ring is in, we want to uh, really set it and squash it in place. So you run the valve follower up and squash the packing nice and flat. As you get more rings in there, sometimes you have to really crank down on the nuts to get everything uh, squashed flat. And then you can insert another ring. And you just keep going and going, putting in a ring, smashing them down, putting in a ring, smashing them down until you have the appropriate number of rings in there. Usually you can't really get the last one in, so you might have to run the engine a bit, let everything settle, and then cram that last uh, ring of packing in after that. Some of these have 10 to 12 rings on them, so it's quite a lengthy, tedious process. Oh, 
But the IP valve rod is now repacked. We'll take a look at it again after we've run the engine for a little while, see if we can fit in another ring. But for now, that is it. And we can move on to some of the other jobs that need to be done on the ship today. Uh, but first, we got a package in the mail. All right, unboxing video. What's in the mail today? Here we've got gaskets for the boiler. There's two of them, and they're seventy dollars a piece. All right. So this so, is this is what your donations are helping us uh, support. Yes, boiler gaskets. So these guys go for the manhole covers. That means they go right here. Side here is the door. The door swings shut. Gasket seals it. Very important part of the ship. All right, and down in the engine room, we're also opening up some of the tanks to be cleaned. The makeup feed water tank here just holds extra water for the boiler. The water in this is just normal city tap water. So hopefully we won't have any issues inside the tank. We're just going to take the door off. And then remove the rubber seal under the door. And now we can look into the tank. So normally this would be full of water, holds about 650 gallons of water to be pumped up to the boiler in case it needs more water. What we want to see is no signs of corrosion and rust, and the inside of this tank actually looks pretty good. There are a couple of baffles in it just to help keep the liquid from sloshing around violently in rough water, which can destabilize the ship. But this looks like a pretty great clean tank. All right, the hydraulic steering pump out from under the wheelhouse. It's getting sent off to be serviced. Yeah, I highly doubt anyone has ever greased that. It's still... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Looks like it moves. <laughs> yeah, it moves. Just nobody ever wants to go under there. It's a bit of a tight fit under the wheelhouse. I just want to get a picture of the, there you can see the hydraulic pump that they're removing. We're going to take that in and uh, have it uh, have it overhauled. Uh, it hasn't been touched probably in the, since it's been installed. All right. All right. And the last thing we have to do today is to take the throttle valve off the engine. So you see our throttle valve here? It controls the flow of steam into the engine, so extremely important part of the ship. We've had an issue lately where it has been leaking steam, which is a problem, so it is getting replaced. Our only issue is that this is a, a three and a half inch steam valve, and they apparently don't make those anymore, so we have been unable to source a replacement for it. So we are changing to a three and a quarter inch steam valve. This is not a big problem and actually might give us a little more finesse over the throttle, which is great. Uh, but the issue is, of course, that the new valve being a different diameter, it means that the flanges on the piping that connect to the valve are going to need to be remachined. We have some folks who are doing that. Um, we're going to send all of this piping and the throttle away to a group called Everett Engineering. They're an engineering company north of Seattle in Everett. They have been handling engineering work and machining work for the Virginia like Five for a good 30 or 40 size. years. They do a little bit of everything from piping to boiler repair to manufacture of parts. People often ask me where we get parts or what we do if one of our steam engines or steam pumps break. The answer is we have we have a guy, like and it's Everett Engineering. 
That means there's water in the system. Yeah. When you open up steam pipes, there's often water inside. That's because any steam left in the system when you shut the plant down turns into water over time. So you should just expect water to come pouring out. So this will go off to have its flanges adjusted uh, to interface with a three and a quarter inch valve. Uh, but now we can look inside the throttle valve on the ship. It's a pretty simple mechanism. It just moves in and out, opening and closing the hole, allowing more or less steam into the engine. The new one will work exactly the same. It'll just be slightly smaller. So the valve here has been removed and we're ready to send it off to Everett Engineering and the, our list of engine room tasks is completed for now. There is, of course, plenty more to be done here in the engine room. But that'll have to wait for another video. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to see the next video that comes out and visit our website to help support the Virginia Five.